you can pray for that individual. And here's what, when you think of principalities of good versus evil, every time you pray for them, you're moving angels in over them. So you're really afflicting them. They don't like the light on them. They want the demons around them. But by putting those angels around them, you bring light on them. This is a man who clearly knows that we are fighting against unseen forces, dark forces. He mentions the word principalities. The Bible speaks about principalities multiple times, and we all know that the Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Principalities are high-ranking demonic forces, and they're in operation behind certain ideologies in this world, and even certain organizations in this world. Have you ever seen a company begin to promote something that has nothing to do with their actual core product or service? But they begin to promote something, some activity, some message that is sinful and against the Bible? This is the work of dark forces that the Bible tells us about. The difference is, is that I play the truth. So if you go and play, go to the devil to play the devil, the devil will deceive you and put something up there that uh, deceives the public. He'll always try to hide in the shadow. He'll always try because he doesn't like the light, even though he's called the light, the illuminator, the uh, Lu uh, Lucifer. And he tries to mimic God. He tries to be like God. So there's always like, um, the, if God has love and what we see as love, he m creates lust. He's always trying to be like that. The devil will never present himself out in the open. He'll never make a big announcement about his plans and his ways. No because his aim is to deceive. And when you want to deceive, you can only do it by appearing to be something that you actually aren't. The devil will deceive by appearing to be an angel of light when he is pure, utter darkness. Well, uh, uh, you haven't seen a black hole. You haven't seen the force of gravity. The fact that you don't see something doesn't mean that it does not exist. Again, the Bible becomes the final court of arbitration because you can demonstrate that the Bible corresponds to reality, therefore it becomes an objective and reliable authority. And the Bible does make plain that there are principalities and powers of darkness, that there are non-corporeal, non-physical beings that inhabit this world, that they were created by God, and though they are spirit beings, in no way does that suggest that they're not real beings. In fact, human beings themselves are body-soul unities, and when the body dies, the soul leaves that body and continues to have awareness. It doesn't have awareness, extension in space, because it's non-physical, but it continues to have awareness as a believer in the presence of God, as a non-believer in torment, according to the Lord's own words from Luke chapter 16. A few years ago, Roe Moody wrote an insightful article titled, The Christian and Spiritual Warfare Today. And the article reads, First, we must learn that our ultimate enemy is spiritual, not human. It is here that Paul reminds us in the classic passage on spiritual warfare in Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12, that we are not only opposed by human beings, but ultimately by dark supernatural powers. That means that even those who persecute Christians and are opposed to the gospel are actually controlled by satanic forces. It is these dark powers, powers and principalities, demons and evil spirits that dominate natural structures and deceive human beings. Does that not mean that we Christians ought to live in fear of powerful, malevolent spiritual forces or expect extraordinary miracles to ward off evil? The devil is committed to preventing people from knowing God and trusting him with their lives. The enemy's tactics do differ depending on whether someone is already a Christian or not, but his ultimate purpose 
is always to keep people from experiencing the love of God. Now, let me clarify this for everyone listening. Spiritual warfare is not something to be feared because the battle belongs to the Lord. This war is not one that we fight on our own, but we allow God to fight for us because it's only when we do this that we'll be able to wage victorious spiritual warfare. This war affects every area of your life. There is no way you can avoid the conflict, but a lot of Christians don't even know they're at war. But others can see the results of the battle in their lives because they've become casualties of spiritual warfare. They're discouraged, depressed, downtrodden, and defeated. Others are marital and family casualties. Divorce, conflict, and abuse are some of the battle scars these believers bear. But let me tell you this, the devil and his demons do not care whether you know how they work. The forces of darkness don't care whether you know their action plan and devices. They only care about which road you're on, which direction you're heading in. They only care about what you do in those private moments because that's what counts. You see, there are forces of darkness at work in this world and you need to pray for understanding because the kingdom of darkness is exactly what it says it is, a kingdom filled with darkness. Meaning there is some level of organization, there is a hierarchy and a way of operation. And so a believer with wisdom and understanding will know that there are certainly individual demons that we face. But there are also stronger, darker forces and principalities at work. And they are embedded within society, in institutions, in certain localized regions all around the world. As a matter of fact, some of the most evil spirits at work today aren't the ones that possess people, but the principalities that animate and control power structures and institutions like governments, schools, or economies. So you see, the danger in being spiritually dead is that you will be unaware of all of this. If you're spiritually dead, you are dangerously unaware of the influence that the God of this world has on this world. It doesn't matter what the kingdom of darkness does because in Jesus, we have the victory already. Now, if you take a look around, look at the news, look at current affairs, it's clear to see that there is a lot of darkness in this world. The hearts of many has grown cold. Godly values, biblical values are no longer held in high esteem in society. You look at the television, you watch the news and look at the entertainment industry and you'll find that there's so much hatred, idolatry and pride that has infiltrated our culture. And if you are not careful, it's easy to be influenced, swayed and enticed by the evil around us. But I want to remind you, that greater is he who is within us than he who is in the world. 